Hey guys, it's your girl Marielle coming back to you from Friday Night Light Movie Reviews where we do reactions and reviews to TV shows, movies, and other digital content. If you are watching this video and you're questioning, didn't she just have that Tupac shirt on in the last video? Just mind your business and let's just keep it going. So today we're going to be doing HBO Max adaptation of Kimmy. So that's the, it's directed by Steven Soderbergh, and we love Steven Soderbergh over here. It's starring Zoe Kravitz, who's pretty much the main character. And non, um, notable mentions is Devin Rattray. He plays Kevin, which is kind of funny because he played the big brother to Macaulay Calkins, Kevin in Home Alone. But, you know, that's a little movie trivia. And Byron Bowers, who plays Terry. Now, when I say two notable characters, you'll find out why I say that later on in the review. So before we get into that, don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button. Please share this video with your friends and family. Let's help this channel grow. And as always, don't forget to hit me up on my other digital platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Those links will be put down in the description bar below. So let's just jump right into it. We're gonna talk about the things that we liked, things that we didn't like, what I recommend you guys give it in a watch and see where it falls in our star stars category. So the plot of this movie is a tech worker named Angela with agoraphobia uh, discovers a rec uh, recording because she works at home um, encrypting for like our Alexa, which is theirs is called Kimmy. And she hears and has evidence of a violent crime. She is met with some resistance when she tries to report it and wanting justice for the person who was on the other side of that recording. She finds herself doing something that she fears the most, which is leaving her apartment. So I like the movie um, a lot for what it for what it is. I mean, yes, it's a I think it's a pretty cool rendition of Jimmy Stewart's The Real Window. Um, if you haven't watched it, if you can watch it, watch it is very good. If not, this is where I get that comparison from. I will say Zoe Kravitz carried the movie all the way through. I mean, especially where a movie that she didn't have very much dialogue. It was just a lot of her movement and we hear her talk here and there, especially her dialogue with the Russian guy, um, I don't think he's Russian, Ukrainian. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I can't remember. But anyway, I thought she carried this movie very well. I also think that, side note, that Zoe Kravitz is a bit of an underrated actor. Um, I can't wait to see her play Catwoman in the Batman that is coming out this summer. I mean, I can't wait. But anyway, um, now, this, now in this version of Kimmy... Um, it uses the, re you know, the pandemic as a part of the plot, which is one of the things that I did appreciate because it wasn't based completely on COVID, but it gave the character, you know, something else to use as an excuse, like her scapegoat not to leave her house because of her agoraphobia. Now, as this movie goes on, we do find out how her agoraph agoraphobia was brought on. And so this is going to be a non-spoiler because I think how the movie moves, if I say one little thing or spoil anything, it's pretty much like you watch the movie anyway. So you know how I feel about that, guys. Um, the whole rear window was dead on, I think, in this this version of uh, Kimmy. Um, we, and it also like, don't come from my neck. Okay. But it definitely gave me some nods to Hitchcock. Um, there were some slow scenes here and there, but I did really enjoy the movement as the movie progressed and as scenes went by, especially because most of the movie does take place inside of her apartment, which is pretty dope by the way. So here it comes to where um there was a scene where she attempts to leave her apartment and i'm not going to say why because that would be a spoiler but she attempts to leave her apartment and the way this scene was done it was so amazing like you heard the sounds of her breath you heard 
the jingle in her keys, you heard the door, the locks. It was more of a auditory scene more than a visual. And I thought that was amazing. I love that, that scene. It just was perfectly done spot on. It does, the movie does capture the whole cabin fever, anxiety, paranoia, fear, even some suspicious, suspicion um, that we all felt from, you know, the world being shut down in the beginning of the pandemic and some people having to be in isolation. So with that being said, uh, Zoe Kravitz character, Angela, it kind of um, set everything up. Like, so I guess it came, kind of gave it some dimension. So it wasn't all about Rear Window. It, it threw a little bit of the COVID in there and then her fear of leaving the house, her agoraphobia. I did like the interaction between characters, but not interaction, if that makes any sense, if you know what I'm talking about. And this is where I say these two notable characters to me um, did make their presence felt in this film uh one being byron bowers who plays terry and devin rattray who plays kevin these are two characters that we see through the course of the movie that live in a building across the street and then a building on like the diagonal part of um zoe kravitz apartment now not to give too much Again, we do see a physical interaction with one of these characters, with both of these characters. And when you see them, I think it was perfect, especially for who her characters is being a, a agoraphobic and low key OCD because she cleans everything. So I think it was it was great. Um, for an hour and 30 minutes, I thought that it was done pretty well. The scenery of how technology sees and hears everything that we do. I thought it was really dope. Uh, for the one for the one notable character, guys, and I'm not going to tell you which one. For the no one notable character that came through in the end, it's a chef kiss for me. I just thought it was done really good. Also, the movie did give me very much enemy of the state. And when I say that, it's with the whole technology people you thought is going to be um, responsible for things, um, who you're surprised who's the bad guy and who you're surprised who's just was already into it. Like this was already the thing. So that's why I gave a I told you it gave me a little sprinkle of enemy of the state. Um, so. The biggest scene that I really liked, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's one of the second movies that I saw when a nail gun is used the correct way. The first one was like lethal weapon and then it is this and that whole scene, guys, come back in the comments and tell me if you didn't think it gave you very much um, how... Um, um, in fifth element that a uh, stonewall face of just it's either me or him kind of feel and the haircut was very similar to um mila jojovic's character in fifth element once you watch it you'll get the connection um overall i thought the movie was good the hour and 30 minutes that steven soderberg had was used very well i thought zoe kravitz shows that she can carry a movie all by herself and still come out the victor now what i recommend you guys giving this movie a watch definitely it's on hbo max give it a watch i don't think you will be disappointed especially a lot of different nods that steven soderbergh used um to create this movement of this movie um so where does it fall in our stars category I'm giving Kimmy four stars. I'll only say that because there was some slow scenes and there were some things that could have moved a little bit better. Interactions could have been a little bit better with certain characters. But overall, guys, I give this movie four stars. So we are at the end of this video, guys. Thanks for staying with me. As always, don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button. Hit me up on my other digital platforms. And as always, stay safe, be courageous, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.